everyone. Hope you're well. Uh, so then, let's talk about my wife. Throwing your curveball right out of the gate in this video. Uh, my lovely top 40 loving wife who hates almost all of the music that I listen to and the woman that I uh, live with who couldn't give a good goddamn about all of the guitar playing that I do either. Now I've had this channel up and running for about four years or so at this point and nobody has heard me play more guitar and been less appreciative about it than my wife, Daniele. Uh, however, it was about two years ago that I was sitting down learning the very long dual guitar solos to the Allman Brothers Blue Sky when she turned to me and said, that is just lovely, what is it? Uh, I nearly fell out of my chair. The, uh, the acknowledgement was too much for me. Uh, it's Blue Sky by the Allman Brothers Band, I said. Oh, that's really nice, she said. Uh, I like that, keep going. Uh, another time, a few months later I'm working on the Allman Brothers uh, instrumental Jessica and again I catch her ear. Ooh, I like that. Uh, what is it? And again, it's the Allman Brothers was my answer. It's becoming pretty obvious to me now that she apparently likes the Allman Brothers band. Uh, so with this particular video in mind, the one you're watching now, last night as somewhat of an experiment, I threw the track uh, that we'll be looking at today, Ramblin' Man, on the car stereo as we were heading out to dinner with our son. And as the song is drawing to a close and we're pulling into the restaurant, I thought that my little experiment was going to be a failure. Uh, no comments on the music from her. And then my little six-year-old son sitting in the back seat chimes up, I like this song, Daddy. I like the guitars. Then, of course, my wife chimes in as well. Yeah, I like it too. Who is it? Success. Uh, even my six-year-old son liked it. Uh, Ramblin' Man is now his favorite song in the world, he informed me this afternoon, and we had to listen to it on repeat in the car about 15 times in a row today. And also, as another aside, uh, a few days ago at work, I had the Allman Brothers on the house stereo system while we were setting up for service at the restaurant I work at, and a young 22-year-old girl that I work with came up to me while Blue Sky was on the stereo and said, Said, uh, this is a wonderful song. Who is it? Uh, I gave her the usual answer that I usually give my wife. It's the Allman Brothers Band. Now, you see, there's a reason for all of this. It's that the Allman Brothers were really goddamn good. Uh, that is why. Good music is good music no matter when it was released, and bands like the Allman Brothers need to be exposed to a new generation, and you can be damn sure as a big fan that I'm doing my little bit to help that along, this video included. So you young guys and girls out there that are uh, subscribed to my channel and watching this video perhaps, just go do yourself a favor and listen to the first four or five Allman Brother albums. You can thank me later. Uh, now, I may be wrong here, but it seems to me that the Allman Brothers don't seem to have that high profile nostalgic classic rock adoration that a lot of other big bands from that era seem to enjoy even to this day. Zeppelin and the Stones and Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and they never seem to have had a nostalgic resurgence in any meaningful way at any point in the past 20 to 30 years. Their core fan base these days is probably mostly folks somewhere between the age of 50 and 75 like myself. The kids out there are not listening to the Allman Brothers Band, and that is a damn shame. My kids listen to them. Uh, maybe it's partly because somewhere along the way, they got mislabeled as a Southern rock group, lumped in with the likes of 38 Special, Molly Hatchet, Leonard Skinner, so on and so forth. Not that there's anything wrong with those bands. However, this is a huge misnomer as far as the Allman Brothers are concerned. So, were they Southern rock? Well, they were from the South, uh, and they had some aspects of the classic rock, uh, classic southern rock sound that would come later in the 70s. However, their music had far more elements of blues and country and soul and even jazz than any of the other aforementioned southern rock bands. Uh, I personally don't think of the Allman Brothers as southern rock at all, uh, other than location of origin, I suppose. They're not so easily pigeonholed as simply labeling them southern rock. Uh, there was just so much more going on with them, like I previously said. Country and blues and roots and soul and R&B and rock and even jazz. And it all intertwined so beautifully. Uh, you couple that with the fact that they had two of the finest guitar players who have ever lived in Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts. 
and then add in Greg Allman's powerful and soulful vocals and keys, and you ended up with a style of music that could be enjoyed by nearly everybody. Uh, unless you're, you know, strictly a metalhead, I suppose. Uh, they weren't very metal, I'll give them that. Uh, and when I say music to be enjoyed, that's exactly what I mean. The Allman Brothers, despite being a predominantly guitar-driven band musically with long, sometimes very long guitar solos, guitar instrumentals, extended jams, so on and so forth, they still did it with a lot of style, class, and a whole heck of a lot of melody. Uh, Blue Sky off the uh, Eat a Peach album, for instance, a track which I've uh, already touched upon a few times in this video, has a three and a half minute long guitar solo, yet I challenge you, unless maybe you're one of those metal heads that I mentioned already, uh, to listen to it and not agree that it's one of the loveliest and most beautiful songs ever written and recorded. And if there's a greater long guitar solo with better melodic flow than Blue Sky, I certainly haven't heard it. So even if you, you couldn't give a toss about guitar theatrics and mastery from a technical standpoint, they were always immensely listenable uh, because melody. Uh, plain and simple, the Allman Brothers Band's music is simply pleasurable music to listen to. The majority of it. Uh, you know, it makes me feel good when I listen to the Allman Brothers. And it thrills me to no end to introduce them to the younger people around me, like my wife and uh, the 20-somethings at work, and even my six-year-old son, and have them enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's enjoyable and pleasurable music to listen to, plain and simple. Uh, however, with that said, you know, they were also musicians of the highest caliber, so they had uh, and still have that aspect and appeal going for them as well. Uh, regardless, that is my love letter to the Allman Brothers for today. Thanks for listening and bearing with me before getting to the tutorial. So then, without further ado, let's get to the tutorial and let's learn this classic Dickie Betts solo, shall we? All right, let's learn this uh, great classic Dickie Betts solo from Ramblin' Man. The first solo, not the long two minutes, two and a half minute long outro solo. We're going to tackle that one in the future. Uh, I'm determined to learn that one and uh, do a cover of it and, uh, and then a tutorial. But for now, we're looking at the main solo, the uh, shorter 30 or 40 second uh, long solo. Now, we're in G, uh, G major for this one, and if you listen to the studio version of this one, it's played in G, uh, G sharp major, and uh, that is because in the studio, they, uh, they sped it up uh, a half a step for some reason. And uh, if you watch uh, the Allman Brothers uh, play this one live, it's always in G, but uh, and it was performed and recorded in G, but for some reason they sped it up a half step because maybe they thought it sounded better. So the uh, the studio version of this one is actually in G sharp, and uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna learn it in G because that is really you know at its core what it's in. It's in the key of G, G major, and uh, so it starts uh, this solo with uh, a couple of a little harmony run. That's one of the guitars, right down the G major scale. Uh, now we're working mostly in the the relative minor box of E minor, uh, you know, right here at the 12th fret. Not so much in the G major scale, right here at the 15th fret. So this is with the the first run, the first uh, harmony run. Kind of just uh, you know starting on the. 12th fret of the D, it just kind of goes right down the scale. And when you get down to the 12 of the B, you got to roll down to the 12 of the high E, up to a double hit at 15 of the B. And now we're grabbing uh, what would uh, be that little note there, which is not really in the scale, but it works. That would be like the blue note, right? So, And then just riding right up the scale on the 12s and 14s. And finishing on the 10 of the A string. Now the other guitar is harmonizing in thirds, so it starts here on the 11th fret of the G and again goes right down the scale but with a slight variation. Little C 
change right there. On the 14 of the uh, high E. And then back in that uh, little progression up to the 13 of the B. back up to a 15 of the B and just ride right up the 12s and 14s until you get to the 14 of the A so that's the other harmony and now we're into the solo solo so here's the first little lick and uh, now we're, we're, we're sliding into 16 of the G other than the first note that you slide into 16 of the G this is all going on on the 15s and 17s of the B and the high E that's the first little progression So you're rolling up there to finish up this little lick on the uh, 15s. And then we're into this. A little pull off from 17 to 15. And then we're into this. Some little dicky bet slides going on here. Sliding from 16 back to 14 and then back to 16. And then string skipping down to the 15 of the high E. And then doing that little slide from 16 to 14 back to 16 again. And the second time you're not going down <clears throat> to the 15 of the high E, you're going to the 15 of the B. And then you're finishing that little progression on the 16 of the G. So up to that point. All right, you following me? And then we're into this. slide there from 16 to 14 and again all right in this kind of like the E uh, natural minor scale though we're in G major and that's that whole lick going on here on the 14s also a lot of rolling going on on the 12s so let's get us up to that point nice and slow to this again rolling on the 14s of the D up to A and finishing on the 12 of the D and now we're gonna hammer on 12 to 14 and then hammer on 12 to 14 of the G and then back to 12 for a double hit 
and then 14 back to 12 again. And then a little half step bend. I think it's actually a pre-bend. And then resolve it back to the 12 again. So from the beginning. And then after you do that bend, you're going to do another 14 to 12 before starting the next little progression. And then kind of just riding up the 12s and 14s, starting with a little pull off from 13 to 12. And now we're finishing up. Is up the solo. So coming out of the little bend, and now we're going to slide back into 16, and then 15, 17 of the high of the uh, B, similar to what we were doing a little bit earlier on. And now back to 13 to 12. And that finishes the solo. And at this point it's really uh, getting low in the mix and you can you can barely hear this little that little section there it's kind of just uh, fading out so I should mention we're up on the uh, the neck pickup as well for this solo and uh, you know very clean tone I've got a little tiny bit of crunch going on here but uh, so that's pretty much it let's run through the entire thing nice and slow and then we'll be done mistake in there <laughs> maybe you caught that uh, but uh, you know what I was going for well thank you for watching and uh, I certainly hope you enjoyed that and maybe found it helpful where you're looking to learn this great classic Dickie Betts uh, Almond Brothers solo I am going to tackle this outro solo real soon the uh, the long two and a half minute long outro solo and uh, when I do and when I learn it I'm gonna post a tutorial for that one as well and I don't think there are any out there on YouTube for that one so uh, that'll be a first I hope uh, hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world wherever that may be and uh, you guys take care of yourselves we'll see you next time go listen to Smallman Brothers cheers <laughs>